Hey guys, welcome to the channel IF 4.0. This is Ajay. So this is ruler skew angle. So I'll just show you one example. If I make this as 45, you can see how these rulers are tilted. So this is the skewing of the rulers. So if I make it as 20 degrees, so it would be this way. So you can see this rulers with respect to this horizontal line have been tilted to uh, 20 degrees. So I have made it again zero. So you have perfectly perpendicular to side skewed as a ruler. Then we will check out for the conveyor behavior. We are having accumulating conveyor. If we are not checking this, accumulation will not be visible on it. So we are, we need to watch if anything is in the blockage state ahead of this conveyor. Then we can see the accumulation happening on this conveyor. So you need to check this for that. Then we have speeds for the conveyor. So this is one meter per second default I have kept. You can increase it decrease it depending on your requirements then this is the acceleration this is deceleration so deceleration and acceleration it is basically used when the part on the conveyor stops and starts so basically when the part is about to stop whether it needs to stop immediately or it need to have some of the deceleration you can put those values here if you and when the part starts again when the blockage is uh, released or when the station starts then you need to put that acceleration there so it will either directly go to one meter per second if you put it zero and if you are putting in a value of acceleration here it will be reaching to its maximum speed by taking this acceleration counter to an account then we have stopping space here stopping space there are two parameters one is we have the offset distance so basically stopping space is the space when the flow item one stops then the flow item two needs to stop at this distance which we have specified here so this is what is the stopping space moving space is the space when it is going to come at the conveyor basically and then when it is going to move while moving it will always maintain this space that is the offset between the flow items that is going to be the moving space then we are going to have restart delay also so this is basically the additional time to delay before starting again after the item has been blocked so basically when item is blocked or stopped it will start after a delay of whatever time you are going to specify here so if you say two seconds i need to when a blockage is cleared the part behind should start after two seconds so that is what is the delay restart delay so this will only be initiated when you have blockage and then you have entry space entry space is the space between two flow items at the entry of the conveyor so that is what you need to specify so we'll put those values and check how we are able to see the changes in but before that i would like to explain you there are two concepts for conveyor when you put entry entry port and the exit port from the conveyor when you connect any of the source or any object to the conveyor you are going to have this small thing known as entry transfer entry transfer has its own properties such as distance along so you have the distance along you can drag this wherever you want to keep so this is dragging then you have distance along then you have orientation so forward there are here you can have fixed random then you have maximum transports in so basically this is uh, basically used this concept if you put here five you will have five items loaded from this entry transfer at the same instance of time so if you make it zero you will have only one part entering from this entry transfer then we have insertion modes simple block upstream items clear available space then we have hold transports if the space is blocked and we have different parameters similarly we have it for exit transfer if you want to put any code for send to port you can put it at this uh, area if you want to put the dimensions you can enter here for exit transfer distance along so this conveyor you know it is 10 meters so the distance of this exit transfer is at the 10th meter so it is at the end of the conveyor basically then we have the checking mark here for stop at the end 
so if you are going to stop at end this is only working when you are having a blockage or you have anything else uh, so anything else in the sense if the buffer is full or we have blockage in the ahead conveyor only that time this will be used then we have continuous peak prediction so this is used for operators basically to evaluate the peak points as it approaches to the exit transfer then we have groups and we have ports similar to the other objects in the fluxim then but for this conveyors we do not have ports this is what you need to keep in mind so for queue and another exit objects everywhere you are going to have the port tab but for conveyor you will not have the port tab either you will have entry transfer or an exit transfer so you need to play around for that now we are going to change the distances that is the stopping uh, we will initially work on i'll make this as 2 so this will get converted as 2 meters so the distance would be 2 meters now the difference between so this is the moving space uh source i will change an interval to every 1 second i need to have the part on the conveyor so i'll make that and if you see now the conveyor properties the moving space between the uh conveyor flow items is 2 meters this also depends on your in arrival time if the arrival time is very long then the moving space automatically suffices your 2 meters so it will not work so what i'll do is i'll make 0.01 this means i will have a faster generation for the parts so if you see now it is 